Obviously, the scale of the problem means on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, they're doing three times the volume of reconciliations, uh, three times the volume of sort of actually calculating against rate cards. And then they've got all those rate cards to maintain. So, you know, maintaining a rate card and doing the fees and billing is one aspect to it, but obviously it's a threefold increase. So typically, you know, it, what it, historically what the houses have done, I guess, have done a lot of manual stuff and they do month end. And therefore that period of work they've now got to crash at the end of each month means they've got three times the volume to get through to work out whether to pay it, whether to charge it and all the other good stuff that goes on. So that's, that's put you know, a huge stress, if you like, on the ops teams that are responsible for doing that in the background. So they're sitting there saying, OK, I've got the volume, I've got to process it all. I think perhaps another way of looking at it is, is this is all about, you know, you could throw people at it, you can throw technology and architecture at it. But it's also about how much you're paying and are you paying the right fees? But really what it's about is, a, you know, are we doing it and managing the workload and have the people, which obviously impacts margins because you've got more people doing the flows, but you're making more turnover, so actually you're making stuff. But actually, are you paying the right amount? And you could be paying threefold difference, if that makes sense, because you've got three times the volume. When I step back and when we talk to the houses in the industry as a whole, the first question really is, how have you digitized your process? Or are you still looking at rate cards that are fairly manual, that have been renegotiated in five years, et cetera? And then if I say, well, okay, we digitized it, are you then comparing it and getting the best deal in the, in the marketplace? Are you looking at the different rate cards and the different deal tickets? The profit obviously could be impacted by threefold if you look at it and get the best rate on a daily basis as opposed to we we'll carry on trading the way we've always traded. So a lot of it is around the profit and the margin, not just about headcount and operations and processes. Have you got these rate cards and documents? Have you stored that data in an electronic format? that can then be read by other systems to make sure it automates the process. And, I don't, and by other systems, I mean industrialized, auditable systems, as opposed to have I put it in a spreadsheet? Am I maintaining it in a spreadsheet and can I validate it? That to me isn't digitization. Digitization is actually, let's get it in a place where other systems can call it and use it. I'll take an example in point. Um, one house where it's, it's more on the commission side as opposed to the actual uh, brokerage side of things. But I look at fees and billings holistically. Uh, what they're saying, we effectively done is said, okay, we've got our commissions rate cards. We put them in the system, but actually the trading system can now link to that. And so when you change it, you change it in one place rather than having to think about how many trading systems have I got the rate card set up in and do I have to go through and manually do it? You put it in one place and it precipitates upstream and downstream to make sure there's one golden source for want of a better description. If you do that, then you've got the ability to scale as much as you want and throw the volume of the transactions through and it will pick up the right rate card, the right banding. And rather than, and I think in, in the world of brokerage and fees and billings, a lot of it, as I said, has been sort of month end. We've had a rate card. It looks like the same sort of style bill. It will take volume changes. And therefore, that's about the right amount. And, and to do it and to do it accurately and reconcile it, you've got to digitize and put your data so it can be read and used in multiple ways. So that's what I mean by digitization. Obviously, it's going to vary, and it's going to vary by houses and how many markets and everything else. As a, as a finger in the air, when we've done some analysis on different houses, and it depends upon whether they're doing FXE or voice or they're doing IRDs or whatever it may be, if you get digitization and you do it properly and then you're reconciling accurately, you're looking at two savings. The first is automation and paying the right amount, so it's like, you know, in terms of leakage. Uh, and, and making sure you only pay what you're meant to pay as opposed to what you've been told or asked to pay. So that's being accurate. And the second saving is very much around, can I get better value? If you're looking at you know, a reasonable size house, there is absolutely no reason why, taking into account all the variables, a 10% saving plus on your fees and billings is achievable. If you do the right analytics and everything else, and 10% on, as you know, what can be tens, hundreds of millions or, or even more for the big, big houses, that's a substantial chunk uh, of money, of revenue that can be saved. So there's two elements to this. The first is the tech, and, and the second is, do you want to outsource it? Because effectively, brokerage fees and billings is a commodity process. Every house is doing it. They're all doing it in a similar way. It's not really a differentiator. The, the trading, the execution, the rate cards is a differentiation. But actually, the processing, the administration, the reconciliation is, is a commodity. 
And one of the key commodities that comes out of this is that each brokerage house can have multiple templates that they bill an invoice in. So it means each counterpart is having to maintain that process. If you outsource, so we, we, we do a BPAS proposition as well as solution, that means that actually if we, if we create a template for a broker A, we can use that, them, that template again and again and again. We'd have to maintain it. So the overheads go down on the maintenance process. That's the first bit of sort of, I wouldn't say technology, but it's about economies of scale and ecosystems and so forth and, and industry sort of utilities. That's one. In terms of the, the actual technology angle of it, again, I would say there's, there's, there's different angles to that. The first is obviously you've got to have a scalable system that can deal with huge volume. Uh, within that, or on top of that, you've then got to work out the digital hierarchy. We've had several conversations recently um, that spring to mind where it, it's, you've got the rate card, but actually it's known to when to apply the rate card to the hierarchy of the institution. You know, because they have multiple legal entities and hierarchies within every institution that you're dealing with. So it's knowing how to pick up and map that so you can allocate it. And therefore, you can pick up the right card and process it on that basis. So uh, we're very visual and very transparent. That's one of the things we sort of pride ourselves on. Is you can actually graphically map hierarchies and work out who's associated with who. And then when the, when the transactions come in, it can say, OK, go down, pick up this rate card. And it's a very flexible, sort of rather than a black box, something pops out the back end, you can actually see it, which means from a sort of a governance and a risk and a compliance angle, it's a very transparent process and solution. And I think with MIFID 2 and all the MIA and all the other regulations, transparency is at the forefront of everyone's minds. So I think that, that's one of the key things I would say there around tech. You know, we've been in, in the industry 20 years. We became part of Cognizant um, in, in 2019. Um, Cognizant has a full-blown outsource proposition of BPAS, where we provide the body shop to do the day-to-day -day administration and processing of fees and billings, to digitize rate cards, to do reconciliations. And the Meritsoft platform underpins that uh, as the core area where you digitize your rate cards, store your rate cards. When the trades come in, profile the trade, work out which rate card, calculate the fees, and accrue. So what you're doing is you're moving from what would typically be a month-end process to a day-to-day -day process. The first couple of things that are going to come out of that is, A, you can manage your exceptions on a daily basis, which means you can clear them up quickly. So by the end of the month, the end of the month process becomes much shorter because you fix things mid-month. And by mixing and fixing things mid-month, you can now accrue and forecast more accurately what your fees and bills are going to be. So you can see them coming down the line. And if you do all of that, then off the back of it, you talk about allocations. And I was saying, well, okay, I've got fees and billings coming in, but how do we prorate that internally against the different books and desks and activities? So it's, it's that sort of technology that, that we provide, as well as the reconciliation process software, which is all part of, of our platform as well. And then the communications, the statements, the billing, the invoicing, the, the, that sort of that tech. And it can be delivered, as I said, either as tech and, and the delivery on site, or what's becoming more common is a whole BPAS. Can you, can you help us do the processing on a day-to-day -day basis?